Do you remember a point in the past when God did something great in your life personally? In your family, in a child, in a teenager? Perhaps in the life of a friend, a burden lifted, a problem solved, a breakthrough in a hard relationship. Remember? There was real joy and happiness. You and others were taken with laughter, perhaps. It was a great thing that happened, and you were truly glad. Do you remember anything like that? A time, a period of time, a day, when God did something great for you. Well, your ancient brothers and sisters in the Old Covenant remembered God doing great things for them. And the psalmist put it to writing when he said, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion or Jerusalem, we were, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. God in his grace and mercy had restored the fortunes of his people in Jerusalem. Now, some scholars believe that the meaning of restoring the fortunes pointed to them, God's people, being brought home from being in exile for 70 years. And they got word that they could go home. And so it was like a dream. Are you serious? We get to go home. Some believe it was that. It could have been. We really don't know. Others believe that the meaning of restoring the fortunes is much broader than that. The wording was used, for example, to describe Job's restoration, and which he writes about in John, uh, Job 42.10. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Whoa, he had a lot before. And he lost it. But here at the end of the story, the Lord restored his fortunes. Don't know exactly what it was that the Lord restored. Uh, perhaps relief from drought or famine, which happened back then. And if you were a farmer, that was a big deal. If it didn't rain, and it didn't rain, and it went on and on. There was no plowing, there was no sowing, and there was no harvest. So to get relief from that, which would have meant, look at the clouds, it's going to rain. The rain came, and the, the, the plowing could resume, and, and the sowing of the seed could happen, and, and eventually a harvest. Maybe it was something like that. That was a part of Israel's life. Could have been, the battle's finally over. No more bloodshed. Everyone's home and things are, are peaceful again. Could have been something like that. Could have been a number of things. Whatever it was, the psalmist had it in mind. And he said, it was truly a great thing. enumerates a number of positive effects that occurred. He said, it was like a dream come true. It's like they were living a dream. It's like, really? I mean, pinch myself. Is this real? Is, is this really happening? It was that kind of thing. You know, so I, to me, I, I think about the exile, and boy, that certainly would fit, but we don't know. But it was like a dream come true, what was going on in their lives. 
There was lots of laughter. Songs of joy filled the air. It wasn't hard to sing. Oh, yeah, they just picked it up, started to sing. And it was a talk of the nations. No matter where you went among the Gentiles, you heard, man, did you hear what happened over there among the people of God? The Lord has done a great thing there. Everyone was talking about it. And it was something that the people of God said as well. Man, the Lord is, has done great things for us. He really, really has. So much joy, gladness. It was everywhere in light of the great things that the Lord did among and in his people. So do you have a memory like that? A time in the past when the Lord did something really good and great for you or in you. You were happy. You were glad. Singing came really easy. Was it a day that uh, you were converted? You remember that? I, I've told you mine a thousand times, right? Uh, six years old. No, I hadn't had a. I didn't go on a crime spree. I wasn't in jail and dramatically converted or anything like that. But nevertheless, God saved me at a young age, and I'm grateful for that. But how about you? Maybe you were older. Maybe you sold some wild oats, walked in the streets of darkness and did some things that were not good. And the Lord at one point in time lifted the blinders from your eyes and you saw your sin and you heard about the good news of Jesus. And it struck you, man, this is good news. Man, I am a mess. I am a sinner. I know it. No doubt about it. And I've just heard the greatest news I've ever, I've ever could hear. Jesus, the Son of God, came to deal with my sin and my separation from God. He came, became a human being. He was born a human being. He grew up. He lived a perfect life. He gave his life at the cross. He rose again. And because of his triumph, I can triumph. And I can receive forgiveness. And I did. Do you remember that? Do you remember when you were converted? Now, it's not always a big dramatic deal. But there is some sense of gratitude. God, thank you. Thank you for saving my soul. Perhaps the great thing was the time when you had zeal for the things of the Lord. Sometimes that's right on the heels of your conversion. Other times there's just a, a season where, you know, you, you, you have a desire to read the Bible and you do and you learn and you grow in your understanding of God and, and how he wants you and has enabled you to love him and others. You were growing in the word, praying, serving, Worship was a joy, not a drudgery. Maybe the memory that comes to mind, I can't read your mind, so you're safe. But maybe the memory that comes to mind is a breakthrough. A breakthrough in overcoming a besetting sin. A sin that just wrestles you to the ground and, and defeat after defeat. Any memory like that? And you were frustrated, man. You, you tried really hard. No, no, no. And before you knew it, you're, you're right back, right in the middle of it again. But then the day came. And finally, there was victory. You were on the other side. Woo! You were happy. Maybe you didn't do that, but, you know, maybe you're more subdued like me. And it's just, oh, I'm glad. Glad. Hallelujah came pretty easy after that. 
You know, there's nothing like a, a broken relationship that was mended. Where forgiveness became part of the conversation. And it was granted to you. And a relationship that had stood apart for, a, for a quite a while became reconciled. And there were hugs and there were tears. There was reconciliation. Life's about relationships, so it's hard to beat that. Especially if it was a, of a friend or a family member, a spouse or a kid. Great stuff. I go back 27 years to the early days of this church. And I remember some of the great things that the Lord did. It was always the small things. You know, we never grew by leaps and bounds. It was always slow and steady. Um, but we moved from the store to the from daycare to the storefront to the Y. And God was working and God was blessing. I remember those days. I remember the start of the training program. And 21 years later, you know, the people that have been positively affected in one way or another, believing that the Bible has the answers to life's problems. I remember. The great things from God that brought such joy and singing don't just have to be a memory. Something that we reminisce about and sit in our living rooms and talk about. You remember the... It's good to do that. It's good not to forget. No doubt about it. But that's not the, what they're doing here. We shouldn't settle for just a memory. Your ancient brothers and sisters in the Old Covenant didn't do that. What did they do? They turned their wonderful memories into a prayer of faith in God. And they cried out, restore our fortunes, Lord. Do it again. Do great things for us. Just one more time. Apparently, life had become hard. And that's the warp and woof of all of our lives, right? There are those th times where, man, Lord, You've really blessed. We thank you for that. And then in a matter of time, there we are, you know, struggling. Life is hard. There's a relational issue. Here, very easily could have been the fact that the crops were failing. It just wasn't happening. They weren't getting the rain they needed. And, and uh, that was a real struggle for the people of God in the Old Covenant. Uh, maybe an enemy had the upper hand, like we saw in Psalm 13, where, where David was the author of that. And, and he was crying out to God because some kind of enemy had him pinned. And he said, this is not right. I should be on him or whatever the enemy was. But here I am, you know, down for the count. Lord, help, help, help. Now, if the psalmist was speaking for those exiles returning home after 70 years of being in captivity, which was a dream come true when they got out, well, when the dust settled, if you read the rest of the story, it got hard. They had to rebuild. And uh, there was opposition. They started and they stopped, started and they stopped, and... And when they were done, it just still really wasn't like the, the old one. So it, the laughter and the songs of joy now were tears and weeping. They prayed that their fortunes would be restored. The great things would happen again. Like the streams in the Negev. So he uses a comparison that takes an image from Old Testament life and says, Lord, restore it like that, like the streams in the Negev. Well, if you know anything about the Negev, you're, you're talking about wilderness. And you're talking about in the summers being, 
you know, hot and bone dry. And the gullies were the wadis, wadis where in the winter the, the water would flow when it rained and all that, and then provide nourishment for the crops and all. In the summertime, it was dry. Nothing there. But in the rainy season, that suddenly changed. The water would begin to flow in the gullies like a rushing river, causing the parched land to soften, allowing for plowing and sowing of the seed. And then, time down the road for a bountiful harvest. Sowing in tears gave way to reaping with joy as the sheaves of the wheat harvest were carried home. Thank you, Lord. They were praying like that. God can do the same for you and me as well. We shouldn't settle for a memory over which you reminisce. We ought to turn it into a prayer, asking God to do great things again in your life spiritually and in Redeemer Church. Pray and believe it. Believe it. Don't pray in any other way. Believe what you say to God. And along with the prayer, start sowing. Sowing seeds of Bible study. Seeds of service. Seeds of spending quality time with your spouse, your friends. Sowing seeds of seeking forgiveness from an estranged friend. God can do great things again when we believe, when we trust him, when we pray, and when we do his will. Now there is a day coming when the fortunes of all of God's children in Christ will be restored like a desert flowing with water causing beautiful flowers to fill the landscape. When the risen Christ comes back again, God will do great things that will bring unending gladness and songs of artesian joy to your hearts and mine and to all of creation. Romans 8 promises that creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and the glory of the children of God. Creation itself can't wait. In Romans 8, it, creation is described as on its tiptoes, looking on into the future for the coming of Christ because the curse is going to be lifted. Good things are coming. Great things are coming, and not just for creation, but for you who know Christ. You will receive, Romans 8 says, the fullness of your adoption to sonship, the redemption of your bodies. And God will wipe every tear from your eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Laughter and songs of joy and gladness will fill the air of the new creation. We will live in the presence of the God of great things. Your best days are coming. But while you wait, remember the great things that God has done for you in the past no less than your salvation. Turn that memory into a prayer of faith, believing that God can do great things again, because he can, and he will. Father, you are the God of great things. You are great in and of yourself. And just to know you personally as Lord and Savior is the greatest thing. Restore the joy of our salvation. Lord, we're grateful for your sending of Jesus into the world, something that turned the world around. There was hope because he came. And 
we have been the beneficiaries of what he came to provide. And that's the hope of everlasting life. We rejoice, our God, for your goodness towards us. You are a great God. And we look forward and we ask that you would do great things for us again. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and let's sing together.